Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be graphing exponential functions day number two. And the first thing we're going to do with this video is we're going to review what we did day number one. And day number one, we looked at this form number one of the exponential function, c a to the x. And keep in mind, in both all we did in video number one, or day number, we considered this coefficient of this term, this exponential term, being positive. And then we looked where a was between, where a was greater than 1 and when a was between 0 and 1. But in both cases, a greater than 1 and a between 0 and 1, we looked at the c that was positive. So we're going to change things up a little bit. Today, we're going to look at where c becomes a negative. And it changes things a little bit. Uh, I will review this particular. We had this guy right here. I had c. Uh, a to the x, c was 3, uh, a this 2, and we saw that a is greater than 1, so it increased quickly. And we came up with this, oh, we came up with this table of values. This is going to be very important in what we're going to do today. And we used our scientific calculator to come up with these values. Okay, and we did determine the domain was all real numbers, and the range was y greater than 0 because the y's never got below the x-axis, and the y's always positive. <clears throat> and on the next example in video one, we looked at, again, where the c guy right here, 5, c is equal to 5, was a positive number, and here a was between 0 and 1, 1 third, and we saw that the graph decreased very quickly. And most importantly, we looked at this table of values right here for these specific values. Okay, and again, we saw that the range was greater than zero because the y's never, the y's, none of the y's dip below the x-axis. And so therefore, the range was greater than zero. Again, you could put anything into this function, so the domain was all real numbers. So... And then we looked at this very good property, very important, interesting property of exponentials. This is true in any case. In any case, f of n plus 1 over f of n is equal to the base of the exponent. So let's jump into an example then where c is less than 0. Okay? We're still going to look at our bases that are positive, positive and not 1. Could be a base. Keep in mind the base could still be the base A. Could still be between 0 and 1, or the base A could be greater than 1. We don't know, but what we're going to determine on these two cases is that C, or this particular form, C is going to be less than 0. Okay, and again, the domain is going to be all real numbers. And there, oh, so, oh, the range is less than zero. And we will talk about why the range is less than zero when we look at our table of values. And again, the y-intercept is going to be zero C. Easy to see, because if I took this function right here, no matter what C is, F of zero is going to be C times A to the zero power. A to the zero power is one, so F of zero is going to be C. So therefore, this tells me right here that the y-intercept is going to be 0, comma c. Okay? Here's the deal. If c is less than 0, the leading coefficient is negative, and the entire graph is going to be below the x-axis. Oh, well, I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, let's use our table of values to help explain why that happens. Okay, so here's our specific example right here. Negative 3 times 2 to the x. Here, c is negative 3, which is negative. And a, the base, is 2. And before I talk about increasing quickly or decreasing quickly, all I'm going to do is I'm going to find these values. I have this function, negative 3 times 2 to the x, and I'm going to find these outputs and these points. So if I put negative 3 in here, what would I get? I would get negative 3 times 2 to the negative 3. We're going to evaluate that. Again, I get negative 3 times 2 to the negative 2. I get negative 3 times 2 to the negative 1. 
keep in mind this is the rascal right here that you're putting this is the variable this is what changes each time and here I get negative 3 times 2 to the 0 I can do that one real quick 2 to the 0 is 1 that's just negative 3 so that's going to be the y intercept 0 negative 3 if I put 1 in I get negative 3 times 2 to the 1 it's going to be easy as well negative 6 negative 3 times 2 squared 2 squared is 4 that's going to be negative 12 and I get negative 3 times 3 cubed I believe that's going to be 3 cubed is 27 oh so looks like I filled in the table for you and how did I do that with my scientific calculator I had a few filled in already but if I take my scientific calculator, negative 3 times 2 to the negative 3, 2 to the negative 3 is 1 8, negative 3 times 1 8 is negative 3.75, negative 0 0.375, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth, negative 3 times 1 fourth is negative 3 fourths, 2 to the negative 1 half is 1 half, 3 times 1 half, negative 3 times 1 half is negative 3 halves, right there. And you know, I notice that all these values are negative, and the final one I was working on, negative 3 times 2 cubed, 2 cubed is 8, negative 3 is negative 24. So we're going to plot these points. And we would have a tendency to think that this thing increases really quickly. Mm, I don't know though. So let's just plot these points. Let's go 1, 2, 3, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Negative 3 is going to be, ooh, negative 1 eighth. It's going to, we'll plot these in somewhere down there. Negative 2 is going to be negative 3, 4, somewhere there. We're going to go to negative one half zero is going to be negative three. Oh, just go we're just going to kind of estimate it one is going to be down here at six and be about twice that then two is going to be twice more of that so it's going to be way down here and we're going to see that this thing is going to go way down here quick so this thing is going to decrease quickly I didn't even put this point on there. But again, we have all negative values. They're all negative values because of this negative 3 right there. Because of that A, that leading coefficient being A. And there's nothing mysterious about graphing these points. There's nothing mysterious about putting these points in your scientific calculator and finding these points and then scaling your X and Y so that you see that this graph does decrease quickly it absolutely decreases quickly the domain on all rational or all exponential functions is all reals and i think it's fairly easy to see that the range here i think it's easy to see that the range is y is less than zero as was given so you'll have a couple other assignments where the c is negative or this leading coefficient is negative and then the a is between zero and one and then i'll let you figure that out yourself don't forget the most important tool in graphing these is the table of values this is the most important tool so don't forget to create your table of values with your scientific calculator and you can use these seven values negative three negative two negative one 0, 1, 2, 3, to plot the points and graph, okay? So let's do another example here, and let's throw another wrench in it. The next wrench being, oh, what about this exponential form CAX plus D, where A doesn't equal 1, and C could be positive or negative. Ah, C could be positive or negative. 
A does not equal 1, so A can be, again, A can be between, we're going to let A be greater than 0, though. We're going to let A, we're going to make sure that A always is going to be greater than 0. So A is going to be greater than 0, but it could be, A could be between 0 and 1, or A could be greater than 1. C could be positive or negative, and then we have this thing here we call this D. This is just a constant. This is going to take the graph and shift it up or shift it down, okay? And the range of this particular function in this form is going to depend on that D. The y-intercept, I think it's going to be fairly easy to see that it is 0, comma, C plus D. Oh, how, and that can, that can be easily shown because if I take F of 0, I'm going to have C A to the 0, plus d. Well, what's a to the 0? 1. c times 1. c times 1 is c, plus d is just c plus d. So this is indeed the y-intercept. And in this case, this graph may have x-intercepts. We have not looked at an exponential function that has had x-intercepts yet, but these certainly can. Okay? So the domain is the real number. The range is going to depend on the table of values. And we're going to create, again, we're going to use this table of values to assist us in graphing this function. And we're just going to be very careful. We're going to know that the function, here's our example, 2 times 3 to the x plus 5. And we're going to be very careful in putting these values in. And then we're going to plot those points and connect the dots and see what's going on here. So if I let x equals negative 3, this is what I have. I'm going to have 2 times 3 to the negative 3 plus 5. Let's see what that is in a bit. If I put x equals negative 2, I'm going to have 2 times 3 to negative 2 plus 5 again. Equal to something. This is going to be 2 times 3 to the negative 1 plus 5. This is 2 times 3 to the 0 plus 5. Well, oh, I can do that one real quick because 3 to 0, 1, 2 plus 5 is 7. So the 0, 7, I can write off the daggone get-go. That's the y-intercept. That's an easy one to find. I have 2. So the next one, put x equals 1. 2 times 3 to the 1 plus 5. Well, look at that. 2 times 3 to the 1 is 6 plus 5 is 11. So these I can calculate. If I can calculate them quickly without my graphic calculator, without my scientific calculator, oh my goodness, go ahead. That's going to be 11, and I have put x equals 2 in, and I have 2 times 3 squared plus 5. 3 squared is 9. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 5 is 23. Oh, that's it. Now we're getting up there. So I have this point 1, comma 11. This point right here, 2, comma 23. Let's do one more x equals, we want these seven values here. Let's go 2 times 3 cubed plus 5. What the heck is that equal to? Well, I get 3 three power, 27 times 2 is 54 plus 5 is 59. Well, we see that one's going to go way up there, 3 comma 59. And let's find out what these values are, and let's just use our scientific calculator to calculate these values. And using my graph and calculator, I ask you to use your graph and calculator on that. I got these three values right here. I have 5.074. When x is negative 3, when x is negative 2, I get 5.222. When x is negative 1, I get 5.666. And this is interesting. These are right above 5. Do you think there's anything that I could get that's going to give me an output below 5? Well, it's going to have to be, let's try one, because I, I don't think there is. Let's try x equals, let's for giggles, let's just try x equals, I don't know, negative 9. Let's try x equals negative 9 and see what we get. If x equals negative 9, I'm going to have 2 times 3 to the negative 9 plus 5. Put that in my graph and calculator, I get... 3 raised to the negative 9 times 2 plus 5. 
oh, guess what this one? This guy is 5.0001. Oh, so this guy never will get below. This graph is never going to get below 5. And I think it's fairly easy to see by this table of values. You could do one more value that this graph is never going to be below 5. So if I were going to plot these points, I'd have to come up here to y equals 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to have to sketch this diagonal line. I'm going, to, I'm going to sketch a dotted line. And I don't think that graph is ever going to go below that 5. Let me do my values here. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And I notice if I'm... It's going to be really close to 5, just above 5, if negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. It's just going to be right above. It's going to be right above 5, a little bit more above 5. Let's go blue. Right above 5, and then it, then it comes up to 7 at 0, and then at 1 it comes up to 11. And then it's going to jump. Oh, now it's going to jump way up here, and the 3 goes way up here. So this this graph is going to look still look like an exponential graph, and it's still growing exponentially. But what's happening is it's never going to go below that number five. It's never going to below five. So that's going to give us the range. The range of this function, all the possible y values, y is going to be greater than five. Always. The domain is all real numbers. And don't forget to use this very valuable table of values. If you do the table of values, put your numbers in correctly, I think you're going to be able to see that the range here in this case is D. Y is going to be greater than D. Okay? So let's see. It, uh, the domain is all reals. The range we saw was Y greater than that D, 5. The y-intercept was 0, 7. And is there are there any x-intercepts? No, this thing never crosses the x-axis. No. Could it happen? Could an exponential function of this form have an x-intercept? Well, we will investigate that. And you'll have a couple problems where there will be some x-intercepts. So that's going to be video number two about graphing exponential functions. Watch the videos, use the table of values, give the domain, give the range, and we'll see you soon.